Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and to this hobby space tour. Uh, yes, this is a requested video and I know you guys like this because I love these when watching my favorite YouTube channels. I like to see how they practice their hobby basically. So this video is going to be a two-parter, uh, but you will see my entire workspace. Uh, we'll begin with the workbench tour and then we'll go to a collection tour. Uh, both in the same video. Disclaimer for both, uh, for the workbench tour, I'm not going to go specifically into all the tools that I use and how to use them because that would be a video in itself. Uh, it's, it's going to be more like uh, how I organize uh, my workspace, how I store things. Uh, but yeah, there will be some tool commentary nonetheless. Uh, and for the watch collection, I'm not going to be do the I'm not going to do a state of the collection because that would mean I have to talk about an hour because there are 50 watches back there, um, and it would be boring at some point. But I will do uh, shots of the entire collection, talk about uh, what watches there are, what brands there are, uh, just so you get a high level impression of what the collection is. Okay, so without further ado, let's start with uh, the workbench tour. We're going to start our way uh, from there and work our way to the workbench. Uh, this stuff uh, doesn't concern watches. Okay, so um, this is uh, some. These are some drawers that I got lately. Uh, as you can see from the size of my uh, palm, uh, it's small-ish, uh, but I got this just so I can organize better my parts. Uh, my parts used to lay in all of these drawers, very unorganized, uh, but I thought it was high time to get a more organized way of storing them. And I have to admit that this uh, chest of drawers also caught my eye because it just looks so nice. Uh, it was in a video before when I unboxed it. Uh, yeah, it's probably 50 years old. Uh, it's uh, Rudolf Flum, um, this brand makes all stuff, uh, all kinds of stuff for watchmakers, tools, storage. I don't know if they're around anymore, but yeah. Um, so I got labels on them, what they are. Uh, basically I organize them via brand. Uh, I also have some mechanical parts here because I also uh, tinker with some mechanical watches at some point. So yeah, uh, just so you can see, this is how I have them organized. Uh, you have little uh, papers inside just so I can write down what they are. Uh, yeah, for example, here we have some UC, uh, Seiko UC cases. Uh, these are complete watches, bands and other stuff. Uh, so that's just Seiko. This is Citizen. Uh, this is others. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have quite a lot of watches here. Uh, now these, these aren't projects. Uh, these are only parts. I keep my projects somewhere else. Uh, this is miscellaneous, loads of boards, because yeah, you don't know when you need something from a board like a capacitor or a quartz crystal or a micro light. Really love this. Uh, I encourage you to get one. Just write Rudolf Flume uh, on eBay and surely some stuff like this will pop up. So now we can work our way to the main piece here, which is the workbench. And I'm going to talk about a bit uh, how I managed to get it to look like this because you don't buy something like this. Uh, so the drawers are IKEA uh, and they came actually, this was supposed to be the tabletop uh, that went on those drawers, but uh, I built this, uh, this is a shot from the side just so you can see it's sort of a triangle. The purpose of this was so I can close this lid uh, and uh, just hide whatever mess was there. Uh, but actually I ended up not closing it at all, uh, so I just left it like this. Uh, so yeah, IKEA, IKEA uh, countertop uh, from a hardware store. Um, wood to build those were also from the hardware store. Uh, and yeah, I added this. Uh, this is actually an LED light, uh, which works pretty well. On the top of the bench, we have these very nice, uh, again, uh, put that aside. Uh, Rudolf Flume uh, chest of mini drawers. Um, I just have loads of stuff in the in these. Uh, I don't have them labeled because I know everything uh, that there is in them. 
For example, here I have batteries, storage boxes. Yeah, these are super nice. Uh, again, you can find them on eBay. Just do a search of them. I have two of them. Uh, this one has some parts, but uh, mostly tools. Uh, and here, this one. This is where I keep my projects. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, UC waiting for a coil change. I love these because uh, they can easily fit on the work, fit on the workbench, and uh, you have very quick and easy access to whatever you keep in there. Um, so yeah, I, I advise everyone who tinkers with watches uh, get some of these because they are so nice, so old school. Um, so well thought out, good quality, and uh, trust me, they will change your life for the better uh, if you're a tinker and you always have a mess. And at the top of each, you can see I have these, uh, well, shelves, I don't know how to call them. Uh, this plus that was actually a box which I cut into half. Uh, it came with some kids' toys, uh, a, a toy, well, but yeah, uh, I, I commandeered the box. So, so I keep here um, various uh, stuff. Here I have oils, Q-tips and toothpicks. And uh, here I have uh, different ointments. Yeah, I have water, vinegar, isopropylic alcohol and window cleaner. A cup there in case I get thirsty. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, the tools on the top. Um, yeah, the, the soldering station is a no-brainer because uh, you get to use, you use this a lot if you work on digital watches, so it needs to be on hand. Uh, I also have this, um, it's, people know it as a Dremel tool, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know, uh, a rotary tool. This is a Proxon, works very well. I use it for polishing uh, and other stuff. You can even cut with it because it has these sort of like grind discs. Goes all the way to 10,000 RPM uh, from 5, sorry, 20,000 RPM from 5,000 RPM. It's quite strong. Um, I also have a Dremel, but I like this one more because I feel it has more power being DC. Yeah, um, so those are the two tools on the top. Um, yeah, I have this light that is supposed to replace the light that uh, needed to go here under my microscope, but I removed this one because I find this one a lot easier to work with because I can position it wherever I want. Uh, if I want a certain angle with light, I can just change it. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the microscope. And you can see here, I built this microscope holder. Uh, this is a gas uh, piping joint or T or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is uh, steel piping from the hardware store. This is a huge nut that I adapted so I can fit the microscope at the end. Uh, swivels around with ease, you can adjust the height. Uh, I used to have one of those boom holders, uh, but it, I couldn't close this lid uh, and it, it actually had uh, a huge mounting uh, foot right here and it took up a lot of space. Uh, so yeah, making this smaller custom-made one uh, just made my life a whole lot easier. The microscope is nothing fancy. Uh, it's a 20x because I know people ask what x what magnification is the microscope. It's a 20x microscope. You don't need more. You don't need less uh, if you're working uh, on digital watches. Um, get whatever brand you have. Mine is a Novex. I don't know what type of brand. That's that's not the name brand. But yeah, had this for I think 10 years now, and it works excellent. I, decent optics. Um, for watches, it's more than you need. Oh yeah, before we move on to this lower space, just want to show you something, guys. Uh, just have a look at this. This is where I keep my pliers. Uh, and actually, this is, well, a prototype, if you will, uh, because I plan to build one there as well. Uh, this makes the pliers uh, uh, easier on hand if you need them, and it hides them neatly under there just so the whole space looks a lot more tidy, but this takes forever to make. Um, and I'm wondering, what do you think? Should I keep it like this or just store the pliers in a drawer? I don't know. Well, cool factor is beyond 900. 
but uh, yeah, I don't know if it's that practical. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Should I add one to the other side? So on the lower part, uh, in the IKEA drawers, uh, I keep various stuff. I try to keep them organized. Uh, this top right drawer is the most used one because here I keep my screwdrivers and my tweezers. Um, miscellaneous cutting stuff and other screwdrivers um, yeah uh, you, you, you can see from the image what 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 type of tool these are um, these organizers uh, don't come from IKEA I just type drawer organizers on Google and uh, I found the local result you get these parts as a, a two meter part and then you get various types of joints. Below here I have watches and yes, uh, all of these ones are for sale. We'll probably list them on the Vintage Digital Watches Facebook group. But yeah, uh, let me know if you want something from here. Uh, the other ones are watches that um, relatives, friends gave me to work on. Uh, and here I have watches that work, but I have no destination for them yet. They are not projects uh, because they work. Uh, I just don't know what to do with them. Pondering on either selling them or keeping them for them in the collection. Yeah, going further, uh, we have the electronic stuff, uh, multimeters, uh, test uh, keyboard. Um, yeah, just your basic electronic stuff. Uh, what multimeter do I recommend? The Sanva uh, PM3, very good one. Um, Japanese quality, pocket sized, uh, works good. It's actually been on the EEV blog, if you know who he is, he recommended this, gave it a try and it works. I do also have a Fluke, but this one is a lot uh, more affordable more portable and you don't really need a fluke if you do this kind of stuff uh, yeah this is my electronics um, drawer portable scope some other stuff in the back um, here I have presses and press stuff and here we have a bunch of boxes more screwdrivers this is another one of those Rudolf Loom, but in another form factor. Five drawers. I actually store here straps. So on the lower one, I have um, bracelets, metal straps, or how you want to call it. These are rubber ones, uh, leather ones. Uh, here we have all sorts of knickknacks, clasps, extenders, and whatnot. And probably, I know there, there's a NATO in here, yeah. Uh, this is my staking set. Uh, why do I need a staking set? Actually, I used this staking set when I changed the, when I adapted the Rico movement into this Yamaha. I, I do recommend uh, getting one if you want to be more serious. And moving on, uh, some of these drawers still need organizing. Uh, so yeah, this is a bunch of everything. Uh, and this is, has been organized and this is the other proposal that I plan to store the pliers uh, use one of these organizers again uh, yeah just keep two in every space um, let me know what you think yeah the tools you can see from the shot what they are hammers uh, this is an interesting one this is used to make notches in uh, leather straps very useful if you want to adapt a leather strap, just generic pliers. Oh yeah, generic, they're not quite that generic. These are snap-on, used to work for them. Uh, that's how I got them. Um, this is a flush cutter, super useful. Everyone should have a flush cutter. Why won't it focus? Yeah, there we go. Um, used in all sorts of situations. Uh, yeah, some more mechanical stuff uh, and bits and whatnot. Uh, yeah, still needs to be cleaned. Oh, still needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here we have trash bin, 
every workspace should have a trash bin. So yeah, that is the workbench tour. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that because right now we are going to move to the collection. All right, and there she is, the collection. Uh, general shot of everyone, everyone looking very nice. Uh, I used to have more than 100 watches, then it went down to around 70, uh, and then it went down to 50 watches. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's collecting for you. Uh, you always try con to consolidate, you keep what you like, you discover new stuff. Uh, this is my collection I now, and I honestly, I don't think it will ever get bigger than this. Uh, probably some items will be replaced by others, but we'll still have to see because I really like what I have now. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, do an overview of how they are organized and then we can go in detail. So the way I store them, oh yeah, by the way, uh, these shelves are from Ikea. They're called, called Gnetby. Uh, I actually cut them down to size in half uh, just so they can fit my new workspace. Uh, okay, and the way that I organize them, this is the Orient group. Uh, here we have some Seikos. Uh, sadly, I only have three Seikos in the collection. Can you believe that? Um, I know, yeah, what, what can you do? I like Citizen a lot because this is all Citizens. Um, uh, this is, where is it? Yeah, this is uh, Rico. Um, and uh, from there to here, that's all Casios. There are some pockets of other brands like this pocket, that pocket, that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, you will see them up close in a bit. So really at the top, uh, we have the Seiko Data 2000 or UC uh, with keyboard and big dock. Uh, this has been my collection forever, uh, really like, uh, and I, I think everyone who's in digital watches should get a setup like that. Uh, it's really neat, you can even program it. Um, some boxes uh, of stuff that's around here, uh, and right here at the top we have uh, something that some may think is my, the flagship of the collection. Well, it is among the top two flagships of the collection. It's the Novus Scientific Calculator Watch. Um, other, it was also, I think Novus is a secondary brand. Uh, the one that everyone knows is National Semiconductor. Exact same thing, different branding. Uh, going further down, we have my Orient. You can see I have loads of solars uh, and the uh, Orient calculator watch. Now I have the two variants, really love these watches. I think that their design is spectacular. Going further down, we have some further Orients, you can tell, actually only one, I, you can tell I like solar Orients. Uh, we have the Seiko pulse meter from Aliens. Uh, and here's a small Aliens uh, apparel. Yeah, need to attach that to a t-shirt at some point. Here we have the Seiko TV watch, iconic, uh, iconic watch, uh, yeah. This, this is what this tower holds. Going on to the Citizen Tower, we have right at the top some old, very old school citizens. Uh, this is from the series of the first digital watches produced by Citizen. Really like it, really chunky, uh, very good condition. Going further down, here we have uh, one of my favorite watches of all time. That's the Citizen Voice Memo. Super, super cool watches, nice feature, um, really cool design. Uh, you can wear this today, all day, and uh, you will look good doing it. Uh, going further down, we have my Anadigis. This is an independent. I really like this design of the Citizen Anadigi. This is the my favorite Anadigi flavor, the uh, water, the WR100 version. Citizen VX2, this is, I think, the only digital watch that I know of that can uh, listen to your voice. Uh, vintage one, of course. Further down, we have some further citizens uh, present for my wife. So, really love this design and dial. Uh, we have the Citizen radio watch, the Soundwich, 
and here we have uh, this can't remember the serial number of this but has dual screens you can see you can see the entire calendar there full calendar watch and here we have some further citizens uh, Anna DG's uh, this and this one have the same modules uh, different look this is super rare just look at that design uh, kind of reminds me of some of today's uh, really high-end watches uh, yeah and this is a C110 this is the watch that I bought and sold the most and so that's why this one is here to stay so that uh, we leave the citizen column or tower behind and here we move on to what I think is the flagship of my collection. Yes, this is the Epson RC20. Uh, I think that this is actually the first smartwatch. Uh, most people say that Seiko Data 2000 is the first smartwatch and some say that the Seiko TV watch is. Well, no. Uh, and let me tell you something. This has a touch screen. Th those don't have. This one was specifically made to be programmable uh, yeah, in uh, assembly language. This is a full pack you see here. I also have the white one. Uh, this is one of the means that they had to load programming, load program, load programs into it. Sorry for that. Um, but you can also do it with a modern computer. Um, yeah, I really love this one. Uh, I think it's the flagship of my collection because of my university background in programming. Uh, yeah, really, really love it and yeah, they go for big bucks. Going further down, we have uh, three different watches. Uh, this is uh, uh, Sakura VIP 2000. Super cool design, super cool. Solar panel right under your cuff, uh, under your shirt cuff. Uh, this is a uh, Wittnauer Polara. I think this is my only LED watch and here we have the Hoyer chrono split uh, definitely know what that is and here we have the Rico section uh, and this one is super super nice Rico uh, let me show you something this has a full calendar as well let me yeah there we go um, so this form factor I've never seen in other digital watches have this uh, digital screen on the left let's call it that and the other right part of the watch is the analog part. Um, super cool. Also have the manual, courtesy of a digital, uh, courtesy of a vintage digital watches Facebook group member from Hungary, I believe. Uh, another Rico, very complex one. Love the look. This is a musical alarm Rico, new old stock. Going further down. And here we have some beauties. We have also a Rico that's crown controlled. This is my Yamaha Flygraph. Super cool designs, excellent colors. Uh, really love this one. Uh, I also have a different version incoming, uh, which I need to uh, add, change the module in it. So we'll have both of them. And here we have the Tissot TSX9. What a design, look at that. Marvelous design, super rare watch. Love it, love it, love it. So let's move on to the last tower. And right here at the top, we have the uh, Fossil Abacus. This is the smallest Palm OS uh, PDA device. Uh, discontinued years ago. You can still program this. Uh, if you have the developer tools for Palm OS, super nice, love it. Uh, first GPS digital watch. I love this one because I actually found this in a shop uh, on a skiing trip in Slovakia. And uh, yeah, ju just look at the origin. I didn't pay that. Look at that. 846 euros. Now I didn't pay that. That was the price it was sold years and years ago. Just just to show you what that technology met back then. And here we have the Casios. Yes, Casios. <laughs> Who doesn't love a Casio for into digital watches? These are my data banks. Uh, the record data bank, the re uh, voice recording data bank. Uh, love it because of that feature. Uh, this was a watch, this data bank. 
I bought and sold quite a bit, quite a bit. So this one is here to stay. And here we move on to some old fellas. Uh, Casio CFX 200, uh, Casio's uh, scientific calculator watch, uh, an icon, and this is a C701 most basic Casio calculator watch from the 80s. Um, everyone will know what it is if you're wearing one. Uh, and this is the Casio DV2000, uh, a solar watch from Casio that is very sought after. Uh, you can tell why. Massive, nice design, really solid watch. And here we have my group of G-Shocks, yes. Uh, so we have the Riseman. This isn't, I guess you can call this one vintage, I suppose it's old enough. Uh, but I've been lasting after this one since it came out. Uh, I wasn't that much into vintage digital watches. I was into watches, but ended up getting it a couple of years ago and really love it. I also wear it. Uh, this is my oldest G-Shock uh, DV5700 with original bezel, shroud and uh, strap. Screw on back. Really, really old school citizen. Uh, sorry, <laughs> really old school Casio. Uh, and the, here we have a massive, I think this is called the Sky Force or something like that. Um, sensor watch, just look how big that is. It's humongous. I really love it. I have this one from a friend here in Romania uh, that gave it to me. Uh, thanks. It's a super nice watch. And here we have the last ones. And this is the Casio F100. I have two of them linked uh, in the same way that Ripley wore them in Alien. Uh, this is a BM100. This is among the first uh, altimeters from Casio. It's also depth meter. And this is my first sensor watch. Uh, well, not the, this, the, this exact one. I ended up purchasing it again. It's um, Oregon Scientific Sensor Master. Uh, yeah, I had this during high school and ended up finding it uh, on a buy and sell website in Spain and I pulled the trigger just because of the nostalgia factor. And uh, yeah, I guess that rounds up my 50 or so watches. So if you made it up until this point, that means you really love digital watches just to listen to me talk that much. Uh, I need to go get a glass of water. Uh, but. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.